morning, everybody. Thought I'd do another commute chat as I'm back in Asheville here. And I thought we'd ride my normal route to work down through Carrier Park and then out through Biltmore Village. And I thought I'd just kind of reflect on being back in Asheville after Hurricane Helene. And because this is our normal route, this way you could see some of the damage. Uh, so I left town for three weeks following the hurricane. And when we returned, we had just gotten water back on at our place. We had said we weren't gonna come back until we had water. And uh, while we have water back, it's technically not drinkable. Um, basically the turbidity level of the water is too high. And so as a result, it's not drinkable. They're dumping a bunch of chemicals in it um, and sending it through without it being filtered. So being back in Asheville is a little funky because if you shower, you can't get the water in your mouth or in your eyes. Uh, you're technically uh, not supposed to wash dishes with it unless your dishwasher can hit 170. If it can't, you're supposed to uh, like dunk all of your dishes in bleach. Um, so it's kind of a, a funky setup right now. Um, all of our water is coming from bottled sources, bottled drinking water, and then we have like some big five gallon containers that we use for, you know, like dishes and stuff like that. So this is Carrier Park, and that is the Melodrome. When I drove my car down through here about a week and a half ago, there was like part of an RV slammed up against the over, like the catwalk thing that goes over the melodrome. You can see there's just debris everywhere. And this is, you know, over a month later, crews are out here cleaning this every day. You can see that the water level had to have been above my head here. All the bushes are rustled over here. You can see there's debris up in them. So where I'm currently on the motorcycle, the water had to have been 10 to 15 feet above my head. There's a shipping container in the park. Parts of houses. Random floating debris. It's crazy. That gas station totally boarded up. And again, you can see that the water level was like high. See all the stuff in the trees? That's crazy, man. These places were lucky because they're elevated, but the poor rock climbing gym, Cultivate, I mean, it's destroyed. This neighborhood seems to have fared okay, but that bottom house, I mean, the water had to have been almost touching it. See if we could swing this way for a minute, just show you what's going on over here. And this is where the dog park used to be. And you can see the entire park is just destroyed. So right now I'm looking down towards the River Arts District and we're not going to go that way. But that way got it super bad. Literally, businesses just washed away. Complete buildings gone. And I just want to point out, I'm not going out of my way to show you this. I, I'm not... This is my usual way to work on a commute chat. The damage that this flooding did is, it's immense. There's no other way to put it.
So we're making our way right now towards Biltmore Village. On my left is the rail yard. And on my right is the turn off into the Biltmore Estate. And this entire area right here is low lying next to the river. And if you can't tell from all of the dirt left over on the road, uh, this was also completely underwater. Up here is a high spot with the bridge. But as we go back down, all of these businesses heavily impacted by Hurricane Helene. Site temporarily closed, no entry. And you can see like serve pros down here, disaster recovery team. Nice, bro. Nice. And you can see just giant piles of debris down there. So we're rolling into Biltmore Village right now. And I have to warn you, this is really, really bad up here. So if this has been making you feel upset, um, this is not going to be any better. This gas station is closed. This entire area down here was underwater. And it's gonna become really apparent in just a minute. This Wendy's is destroyed, Long John Silver is destroyed, Cava's destroyed, Osaka destroyed. And again, water levels were above my head here. We have disaster relief recovery teams right here. And as you're gonna see more and more of here in Asheville, buildings being condemned and tore down. It's really a staggering sight. Now, as we climb the hill and get further away from Biltmore Village, what you're going to see more and more of is fallen trees. So Biltmore Forest is on the right-hand side here and runs from Biltmore Village back there all the way up to the Blue Ridge Parkway. And that area was just hammered by the storm and has so many fallen trees. And while we're not going to go in there and take a look, because that would be going out of our way. You will see a bunch along Hendersonville Road here. And the forest here are just so old and so dense with big old trees, big heavy trees that, I mean, the stuff that came down is just huge. And it did some real damage. Like you're gonna see a wall just totally blown apart and then what was once really thick forest is just looking really thin. I don't know, man. It's weird being back. It's like things are very not normal, but everybody's almost acting like they are. I mean, like once you're immersed in a situation, Right, how long does it take for it to actually become normal? But from the outside perspective, like last weekend, Kelsey and I drove down to Greenville and we refilled on water and we just wanted a day that felt more normal. 
so we like went to our favorite cafe and then we stopped at a brewery and had some beer and pizza and then we came back and I brushed my teeth that night with a bottle of water <laughs> so like I don't know things are just feeling really super weird The uh, Blue Ridge Parkway got it really bad as well. And they just reopened the section up here two days ago. And so it's open from uh, the next exit over by Sweeten Creek down to Brevard Road, where my apartment is. But then it's closed going up into the mountains. And uh, yeah, this section that we're gonna ride this afternoon it's real thin. It got a lot of trees knocked down. There had to have been a lot of trees covering that road for quite a while. Anyway, I gotta pop into work here, but we'll uh, keep on exploring in just a few. All right, we're finally out of work. It's dark because it's November and the time change has happened, which sucks. Feels like I don't get any time to uh, enjoy the daylight, but that's just part of uh, living in part of the world where we use daylight savings time. Alright, so this section of the parkway had been closed until two days ago, I said that earlier. And you can see just where we're stopped right now, how many downed trees there are and big ones. I think it was probably a real undertaking for the National Park Service to get this road cleared. And then the Mountains to Sea Trail runs alongside this. We got some deer right here. What's up, dude? But this is so thinned out from the storm that it's not funny. I mean, it's, it's incredible. I mean, yeah, it's autumn, but like this isn't just like a Oh, you know, there's no leaves on the trees. This is a, a huge, huge, huge um, loss of trees. I mean, it's crazy. The first time I drove this in the car the other night, I honestly was like, I was just stunned. I couldn't believe how few trees there are compared to what it was before. Especially through these sections. I don't know. All of this feels really weird. It's weird being here. I gotta be honest, it was really nice being in Pennsylvania for most of October. Like, I love being back at home. I got to ride motorcycles with my dad a lot. Got to plan some cool routes and get out. Was mountain biking a lot. Did a cool night ride with some friends. I don't know. It's, it's really hard being back with Asheville being in the state that it's in and knowing that the month prior <laughs> I said no to like a dream job in Pennsylvania um, for a cycling company and I don't know just every day since I've been back I feel like I made the wrong choice don't get me wrong I love Asheville and I want to see Asheville get better from this but man it, you know, it gets pretty soul crushing pretty quickly.
So this weekend, I'm putting new suspension on this thing. Um, I bought a kit from a company from Europe. I'm not going to say their name. You're going to have to check out the video. But like I said, it's going to be out soon. So make sure you stay tuned for that. But that is the uh, biggest complaint that people have with these from stock form is that the suspension is just too soft and I'm honestly experiencing that as well which is why I bought the kit. So I'm going to do that so that uh, this thing is ready to go for all its future endeavors. I'm sure that, uh, oh baby, my dad is not going to like that little spike buck running out there in front of me. Sorry, Dad. It's dusk. I'm not riding at night. Just on my way home from work. Um, but uh, I'm sure Wes and I are going to get out for some cool adventures. So, yeah. I want to get this thing dialed. I bought a rear shock kit and a uh, front fork kit. So hopefully that'll uh, fix some of the issues I've been having with just sagging out the suspension and then some of the dive that I get in braking. I have a bunch of really cool videos from Pennsylvania that I'm working on right now. And in addition to that, I have the uh, Smoky Mountain 500 videos from the trip that I did with those guys, with Josh, Wes, and the two other guys. So I'm gonna have those out soon. Lots of stuff coming this winter. I'm trying to invest more time in this. I love doing this. I want to make this my, uh, you know, dream job would be full time doing this. So maybe one day that'll happen. But, uh, I don't know. We just got to keep at it, I guess. I'm trying to hit 3,000 subscribers before the end of the year. So if you like these videos and you're not subscribed, please subscribe. It'd be a really monumental goal for me. And, uh, I don't know, just a cool achievement overall. I think in a few weeks, when I have some more time with this new helmet that I bought, I'll do a review of it, but I bought a O'Neill Sierra V23 helmet. I have deals on it through my uh, cycling industry discounts because O'Neill and Azonic are the same company. So I was able to snag this for a really reasonable price and honestly, I really like it. This is more like a proper dual sport adventure style helmet and it's actually really nice. I'm, I'm really happy with the quality of it. So I'm definitely going to do a review once it's broken in more. When I can give you a better, uh, better idea of just everything about it. I have one bar of gas left. So I should probably stop and get some. I don't think I've filled up since I was back in Pennsylvania, honestly. So I just haven't been riding because without the parkway open, I just didn't feel like being in heavy traffic. Felt kind of dangerous. Didn't want to ride the highway every day. It's just not as enjoyable as being on the Blue Ridge Parkway. Well guys, thank you for watching. I gotta stop and get some gas so that I can go ride this weekend. But, uh, you know, I just wanted to update everybody and let them know I'm back down here in Asheville and that Asheville is working on recovering. This place is gonna get better.
Lots of determined people. It's a beautiful area. We got hit by a terrible natural disaster, but there's so much to love about this area and things are going to definitely get better. They already have. But if you have any ideas for videos that you want me to make in the future, just drop me a comment down below and let me know. I'm open to anything. I want to keep working at this and making stuff that you guys like. So thanks for tuning in to another commute chat. And I will catch you guys soon. And until then, peace.